Hi, I'm Sue. Thank you for joining me for today's Bible reading for September 25th. Today I am reading the entire book of Micah. I should say the little book of Micah, chapters 1 through 7. It's read in one sitting in the Bible reading schedule for today because it is so short. This is Micah's declarations of what he saw concerning Samaria and Jerusalem. Now, Samaria was the capital of the kingdom of Israel in the north. And Jerusalem is the capital of Judah in the south. Just so you can have a little geographical visual there. And there's several interesting points I'm going to bring up in this, <clears throat> excuse me, in this book. But be sure to reference the two links in the description of the video. One is the introduction to, to Micah and another one is Bible Project's Micah Overview. They're both short, um, just a short explanation of the book, which helps understand it. They're fun and they're interesting and they're not too time consuming. So those will help. You may want to listen to them before you listen to this video. So this is Micah 1 through 7, World English Bible. Yahweh's word that came to Micah the Morishite in the days of Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah, which he saw concerning Samaria and Jerusalem. Coming judgment on Israel. Hear you peoples, all of you, Listen, O earth, and all that is therein, and let the Lord Yahweh be witness against you, the Lord from his holy temple. For behold, Yahweh comes out of his place and will come down and tread on the high places of the earth. The mountains melt under him and the valleys split apart like wax before the fire, like waters that are poured down a steep place. All this is for the disobedience of Jacob and for the sins of the house of Israel. What is this disobedience of Jacob? Isn't it Samaria? And what are the high places of Judah? Aren't it they Jerusalem? So there's the two capitals again, Samaria and Jerusalem. And this was about wealth and greed, corrupt prophets, corrupt leaders of Israel, and uh, justice favoring the rich. Sound familiar? Verse 6. Therefore I will make Samaria like a rubble heap of the field, like places for planting vineyards. I will pour down its stones into the valley, and I will uncover its foundations. All her idols will be beaten to pieces, and all her temple gifts will be burned with fire, and all her images I will destroy. For of the hire of a prostitute has she gathered them, and to the hire of a prostitute shall they return. Micah's Lament, verse 8. For this I will lament and wail. I will go stripped and naked. I will howl like the jackals, and moan like the daughters of owls. For her wounds are incurable, for it has come even to Judah. It reaches to the gate of my people, even to Jerusalem. Don't tell it in Gath. Don't weep at all. At Beth Ophrah, I have rolled myself in the dust. Pass on, inhabitant of Shafir, in nakedness and shame. The inhabitant of Zainan won't come out. The wailing of Beth Ezel will take you from his protection. For the inhabitant of Mar Maroth awaits anxiously for good, because evil has come down from Yahweh to the gate of Jerusalem. Harness the chariot to the swift steed, inhabitant of Lachish. She was the beginning of sin to the daughter of Zion, for the transgressions of Israel were found in you. Therefore you will give a parting gift to Morasheth Gath. The houses of Achzib will be a deceitful thing to the kings of Israel. I will yet bring you, bring to you, inhabitant of Marashah, him who will possess you. He who is the glory of Israel will come to Adullam. Shave your heads and cut off your hair for the children of your delight. Enlarge your baldness like the vulture, for they have gone into captivity from you. Oppressors judged. Woe to those who devise iniquity and work evil on their beds. When the morning light, when the morning is light, they practice it because it is in the power of their hand. They covet fields and seize them and houses and take them away. They oppress a man and his house, even a man and his heritage. Therefore Yahweh says, Behold, I am planning against these people a disaster from which you will not remove your necks. Neither will you walk haughtily. For it is an evil time. In that day they will take up a parable against you and lament with a doleful lamentation, saying, We are utterly ruined. My people's possession is divided up. Indeed, he takes it from me and, sides, and assigns our fields to traitors. Therefore you will have no one who divides the land by lot in Yahweh's assemble, assembly. Verse 6. God's word rejected. Don't prophesy, they prophesy. Don't prophesy, they prophesy. Don't prophesy about these things. Disgrace won't overtake us. Okay, so that's that's the false prophecy. Nothing's going to happen. It's going to be all good. Even though God is de decreeing destruction 
these false prophets are saying. It's all good. So reading that little part again. Don't prophesy about these things. Disgrace won't overtake us. Shall it be said, O house of Jacob, is Yahweh's spirit angry? Are these his doings? Don't my words do good to him who walks blamelessly? But lately my people have risen up as an army. You strip the robe and clothing from those who pass by without a care returning from battle. You drive the women of my people out of their pleasant houses and their young children you take away my blessing forever. From their young children you take away my blessing forever. Arise and depart, for this is not your resting place because of uncleanness that destroys even with a grievous destruction. If a man walking in a spirit of falsehood lies, I will prophesy to you of wine and of strong drink. He would be the prophet of this people. The remnant regathered. I will surely assemble. This is a little two verses of hope here. Future hope. Verse 12. It's to Micah 2 12. I will surely assemble Jacob, all of you. I will surely gather the remnant of Israel. I will put them together as the sheep of Basra, as a flock in the middle of their pasture. They will swarm with people. He who breaks open the way goes up before them. They break through the gate and go out and their king passes on before them and Yahweh at their head. Unjust leaders judged. I said, please listen, you heads of Jacob and rulers of the house of Israel. Isn't it for you to know justice? You who hate the good and love the evil, who tear off their skin and their flesh off from their bones, who also eat the flesh of my people and peel their skin from off them and break their bones and chop them in pieces as for the pot and as meat with the cauldron. Then they will cry to Yahweh, but he will not answer them. Yes, he will hide his face from them at that time because they made their deeds evil. False prophets judged. Yahweh says concerning the prophets who lead my people astray, for those who feed their teeth, feed their teeth, they, I'd like to know what that expression means. For those who feed their teeth, they proclaim peace, and whoever doesn't provide for their mouths, they prepare war against him. Therefore, night is over you with no vision, and it is dark to you that you may not divine, and the sun will go down on the prophets, and the day will be black over them. The seers shall be disappointed and the diviners confounded. Yes, they shall all cover their lips, for there is no answer from God. But as for me, I am full of power by Yahweh's spirit and of judgment and of might to declare to Jacob's disobedience and to Israel his sin. Zion's destruction. Please listen to this, you heads of the house of Jacob and rulers of the house of Israel who abhor justice and pervert all equity. They build up Zion with blood and Jerusalem with iniquity. Her leaders judge for bribes and her priests teach for, for a price and her prophets of it tell fortunes for money. Yet they lean on Yahweh and say, isn't Yahweh among us? No disaster will come on us. Therefore, Zion, for your sake, therefore, Zion, for your sake, will be plowed like a field. Now, you know, a lot of this when he was when they heard this word, whether he how could he have said it? He could have said it audibly. So I don't know if you know, you know, from the history or the, the research or the scholarly writings but if he said it audibly before them if he told it to a scribe who wrote it down or if he gave it to a messenger who took it to them and read it to him you know when they were hearing it they knew what he was talking about you know they did just like when Moses went before Pharaoh you know just like when um was it uh um which one went before Hezekiah? Anyway, they knew. They were convicted. And if they weren't, their hearts were just totally hardened. Um, so, where did I leave off? <laughs> um, yeah, he said, let me go to what gave me that thought. When he said, listen to this heads of Jacob, you know they heard it. In whatever venue they heard it, they listened and they thought about this. It pricked their heart. Um, 4 verse 1. The Lord's return from restored Zion. But in the latter days, it will happen that the mountain of Yahweh's temple will be established on the top of the mountains and it will be exalted above the hills and people will stream to it. Now, this is it says the latter days in that day. Right. So this is speaking of the millennial reign, the future hope. So it says in the latter days, it will happen that the mountain of Yahweh's temple will be established on the top of the mountains and it will be exalted above the hills and people will stream to it. Many nations will go and say, come, let's go up to the mountain of Yahweh and to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us his ways and we will walk in his paths. For the law will go out from Zion and Yahweh's word from Jerusalem, and he will judge between many peoples and will decide concerning strong nations afar off. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not lift up sword against nation, neither will they learn war anymore. Can you imagine? I'm just saying thoughts that come to my mind off the top of my head. But when when the Lord comes and reestablishes his kingdom in the millennial reign on earth, and it says they will beat their plows 
swords into plowshares and spears into pruning hooks. So they begin to garden. Things are put in order. Everyone has their own almond garden. And can you just imagine how fast the earth would transform? Think about after six months or a year, what had been done in, in putting things back in order and creating beauty and people making their own creative property and lands, right? And, and beds for children to sleep in and areas for children to play and just those gardens for food and such and the work and the camaraderie that will go on between people. Imagine how great it's going to look in just a short amount of time. So it says, um, but they will sit every man under his vine and under his fig tree and no one will make them afraid. For the mouth of Yahweh of armies has spoken. Indeed, all the nations may walk in the name of their gods, but we will walk in the name of Yahweh our God forever and ever. In that day, that day, the day, the Lord's day, right? In that day, says Yahweh, I will assemble that which is lame, and I will gather that which is driven away, and that which I have afflicted. I will make that which was lame a remnant, and that which was cast far off a strong nation. And Yahweh will reign over them on Mount Zion from then on forever. You, tower of the flock, the hill of the daughter of Zion, to you it will come. Yes, the former dominion will come, the kingdom of the daughter of Zion. I mean, of Jerusalem. Verse 9, from exile to victory. Now, why do you cry aloud? Is there no king in you? Has your counselor perished that pains have taken hold of you as a woman of travail? Be in pain and labor to give birth, daughter of Zion, like a woman in travail. For now you will go out of the city and will dwell in the field and will come even to Babylon. There you will be rescued. There Yahweh will redeem you from the hand of your enemies. Now many nations have assembled against you that say, let her be defiled and let our eye gloat over Zion. But they don't know the thoughts of Yahweh, neither do they understand his counsel. For he has gathered them like the sheaves to the threshing floor. Arise and thresh, daughter of Zion, for I will make your horn iron and I will make your hooves bronze. And you will beat in pieces many peoples and I will devote their gain to Yahweh and their substance to the Lord of the whole earth. From defeated ruler to conquering king. Now you shall gather yourself in troops, daughter of troops. He has laid siege against us. They will strike the judges of Israel with a rod on the cheek. But you, Bethlehem Ephrathath, being small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come out to me that is to be ruler in Israel. Now, this is the messianic, the you know, the prophecy about Jesus being born in Bethlehem. Let me read it again. This is 5-2. But you, Bethlehem Ephrathath, being small among the clans of Israel, out of you one will come out to me that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings out are from of old, from ancient times. Therefore he will abandon them until the time that she who is in labor gives birth. Then the rest of his brothers will return to the children of Israel. He shall stand and shall shepherd in the strength of Yahweh, in the majesty of the name of Yahweh his God, and they will live, for then he will be great to the ends of the earth. He will be our peace when Assyria invades our land, and when he marches through our fortresses, then we will raise against him seven shepherds. They will rule the land of Assyria with the sword and the land of Nimrod in its gates. He will deliver us from the Assyrian when he invades our land and when he marches within our border. The glorious purified remnant. The remnant of Jacob will be among many people like dew from Yahweh, like showers on the grass that don't wait for man nor wait for the sons of men. The remnant of Jacob will be among the nations, among many peoples, like a lion among the animals of the forest, like a young lion among the flocks of sheep, who, if he goes through, treads down and tears in pieces, and there is no one to deliver. Let your hand be lifted up above your adversaries, and let all your enemies be cut off. It will happen in that day, says Yahweh, that I will cut off your horses out from among you, and will destroy your chariots. I will cut off the cities of your land, and will tear down all your strongholds. I will destroy witchcraft from your land, and you shall have no soothsayers. I will cut off your engraved images and your pillars out from among you, and you shall no more worship the works of your hands. I will uproot your Asherah poles out from among you and will destroy your cities. I will execute vengeance in anger and wrath upon the nations that didn't listen. Why? Because all those things hurt people. The witchcraft and the soothsaying and the idol worship and the Asherah poles, all those open doors for evil in the nation. That's why God's vengeance, because he's protective, father, he's jealous and that's why i said because um for you you didn't listen he tried to warn he tries to warn us he tells us what's safe and right right he tells us how things work six one god's lawsuit against judah listen now to what yahweh says arise plead your case before the mountains and let the hills hear what you have to say hear you mountains yahweh's indictment and you enduring foundations of the earth this makes it to me like okay the mountains and the earth are a witness right doesn't the 
earth, so to speak, record everything we say and do. I mean, <clears throat> the whole conversation of our life is clear. You know, we could think we're hiding things, but in reality, everything we think, say, and do is, is recorded and heard. It, it testifies against us or for us. So when it says, plead your case before the mountains, that's what I think of. Um, for Yahweh has a case against his people, and he will contend with Israel. My people, what have I done to you? How have I burdened you? Answer me. For I brought you up out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of bondage. I sent before you Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. My people remember now what Balak king of Moab devised and what Balaam the son of Beor answered him from Shittim to Gilgal, that you may know the righteous acts of Yahweh. How shall I come before Yahweh and bow myself before the exalted God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will Yahweh be pleased with a thousand rams, with ten thousand of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my disobedience, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? Has he shown you, O man, what is good? What does Yahweh require of you but to act justly, love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God? Yeah, it's really that simple, isn't it? Act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with your God. As simple as that is, we would all do good to write that down on our mirrors and look at it every day and mull it over in our hearts. Because as simple as those words are, they're very profound and powerful. To act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Verdict of Judgment. Yahweh's voice calls to the city, and wisdom sees your name. Listen to the rod and he who appointed it. Are there yet treasures of wickedness in the house of the wicked, and a short ephah that is accursed? Shall I be pure with dishonest scales, and with a bag of deceitful weights? Her rich men are full of violence, her inhabitants speak lies, and their tongue is deceitful in their speech. Therefore I also have struck you with a grievous wound. I have made you desolate because of your sins. <coughs> You shall eat, but not be satisfied. Your humiliation will be within you. You will store up, but not save. And that which you save, I will give up to the sword. You will sow, but you won't reap. I mean, this is the definition of the curse, isn't it? You will sow, but you won't reap. You will tread the olives, but won't anoint yourself with oil. And crush grapes, but won't drink the wine. For the statutes of Omri are kept, and the works of Abba's house, you will walk in their councils. That I may make you a ruin, and her inhabitants a hissing, and you will bear the reproach of my people. Last chapter. Israel's moral decline. Misery is mine. Indeed, I am like one who gathers the summer fruits as gleanings of the vineyard. There is no cluster of grapes to eat. My soul desires to eat the early fig. Hmm. My soul desires to eat the early fig. The godly man has perished out of the earth, and there is no one upright among men. They all lie in wait for blood. Every man hunts his brother with a net. Their hands are on that which is evil to do it diligently. The ruler and the judge ask for a bribe, and the powerful man dictates the evil desire of his soul. Thus they conspire together. The best of them is like a briar. The most upright is worse than a thorn hedge. The day of your watchmen, even your visitation, has come. Now is the time of their confusion. Don't trust in a neighbor. Don't put confidence in a friend. With a woman lying in your embrace, be careful by the words of your mouth. For the son dishonors the father, the daughter rises up against her mother, the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's enemies are the men of his own house. But as for me, I will look to Yahweh, and I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. <clears throat> a lot of thoughts are coming to mind, but I don't want to make this too long, um, too much longer today. Well, I'll just say that one thing. This whole thing about not trusting your neighbor or friend and lovers and family I see that all over the place in our community. I mean, this, this chapter is about Israel's moral decline. We see that in our society every day. People go to work for bosses they have no problem lying to. I mean, talk about dishonor. Calling up your place of employment and telling them you're sick when you're not. Filling out our taxes and lying about it. You know, returning products to the store and lying. Um, you know, people, children lying to their parents. Parents lying to their children, even worse. Even if it seems, you know, insignificant, it's huge. It's a lie. It is a lie. And it's sowing a seed of dishonesty and distrust into our relationships, whether at work or at home with our neighbors. Um, people, people develop intimate relationships with people they don't even know or trust and then are surprised when the person stabs them in the back. So I see this everywhere. This is describing the America I see around me. 
and not everyone, because then it says, but as for me, I will look to Yahweh. I will wait on the God of my salvation. My God will hear me, right? As for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. So there are those who are want to live a pure and holy and righteous, just life, who want to love mercy and walk humbly, right? Verse 8, Zion's vindication. Don't, don't rejoice against me, my enemy. When I fall, I will arise. When I sit in darkness, Yahweh will be a light to me. I will bear the indignation of Yahweh because I have sinned against him until he pleads my case and executes judgment for me. He will bring me out to the light. I will see his righteousness. Then my enemy will see it and shame will cover her who, has, who said to me, where is Yahweh your God? Then my enemy will see me and will cover her shame. Now she will be trodden down like mire in the streets. Um, our pastor used to say, payday doesn't come every day with God, but it comes. Payday isn't every day or necessarily every week or when you expect it or want it, but it comes. And it comes both ways of that double-edged sword, right? The, um, the vindication that comes from God, it comes. It may not come when it seems like it, but he has his own timing for justice. So um, I think that's interesting here what it said. Where is it? Let me read it again. It says, Don't rejoice against me when I fall and rise. Yahweh will be a light to me. I'm skipping around. I will see his righteousness. My enemy will see it. Okay, and those who said, Where's your God now? You know, that they'll see it. They'll see it. Just keep your faith. So it says, um, then, then my enemy will see me and will cover her shame. Now she will be trodden down like the mire in the streets. A day to build your walls. In that day, he will extend your boundary. In that day, remember that day, the day, the Lord's day. This is talking about the seventh day during that tribulation and millennial reign, those last thousand years. A day will, to build your walls. In that day, he will extend your boundary. In that day, they will come to you from Assyria and the cities of Egypt and from Egypt to the river, from the sea to sea and mountain to mountain. Yet the land will be desolate because of those who dwell therein for the fruit of their doings. Micah's prayer answered. Shepherd your people with your staff, the flock of your heritage who dwell by themselves in a forest in the middle of, fertile, of a fertile pasture land. Let them feed in Bashan and Gilead as in the days of old. As in the days of your coming out of the land of Egypt, I will show them marvelous things. The nations will see and be ashamed of all their might. They will lay their hand on their mouth. Their ears will be deaf. They will lick the dust like a serpent, like crawling things of the earth. They shall come trembling out of their dens. Then they will come with fear to Yahweh our God and will be afraid because of you. Who is a God like you who pardons iniquity? Now see, this is going to sum up all of this, all the judgment, all the it's all because of God's goodness, his His character, his kindness, his compassion, his love, his mercy, right? He has to act in the face of justice, and he, he's a protective shepherd. So it says here, who is a God like you who pardons iniquity and passes over the disobedience of the remnant of his heritage? He doesn't retain his anger forever because he delights in loving kindness. He will again have compassion on us. He will tread our iniquities underfoot, and you will cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. You will give truth to Jacob and mercy to Abraham, as you have sworn to our fathers from the days of old. And that's it. That's the entire little book of Micah. Um, again, make sure to, well, free, feel free to comment any thoughts or ideas or, you know, interests that you want to add to the broadcast. Be sure to um, notice if there are some links in the comments for a, a World English Bible, if you want to purchase a copy of that. Like I said, it's new to me for when I started this particular reading series, and I'm really enjoying getting to know this version. And there's another really neat Bible tool down there. Also check the description of the YouTube video for the links for those introduction to the book of Micah. And you can also find the playlist for this series, which is the introduction to the book and the reading through Micah. Uh, there's playlists like that on my channel. So if you ever just want to play them book by book and, and re-listen to them, those are available as well. So that's it for today. God bless you.